So we just finished talking about the first line of defense. Let's talk about the second. This is essentially a war against the pathogens. So this is used if pathogens breach the first line of defense. And it is an immediate, non-specific, you know, um, response. And it is actually kind of predictable. Uh, it's predictable because we have studied it quite a bit and it's present in all animals. Now, there are three aspects to it that we need to consider. The complement system, the cellular response, as well as the inflammatory response. This is present in all organisms and it's persisted for millions of years. And it's fundamentally very important, fundamentally very important for our survival. OK, let's talk about the cellular response first. So pathogen associated molecular patterns. Right. It's essentially molecules that the body recognizes as being non-self. So those kinds of antigens and they trigger a response from immune cells, right, particularly the cells. So very initial, so very quick, uh, non-specific, and eventually it will become specific. So we talk about our white blood cells and we also call them leukocytes, right, a, a word essentially meaning white and that was coming from, uh, they were first found in pus, which is super gross, okay? There are many, many types of specialized white blood cells that participate in this response and they recognize molecular patterns. They try and clean up the problem before it becomes worse. In our cellular response, macrophages or monocytes are probably one of our biggest players, okay? These cells are phagocytes. They are phagocytic, which means essentially they are trying to engulf foreign material. They can hunt down and destroy a pathogen and they can recruit other leukocytes to the site of the infection as well, okay? These are highly specialized within the blood where they're called monocytes, but they can actually move out into the tissue, so from the blood vessels, and that's when they're known as macrophages. Neutrophils are another type of cells. These are also phagocytic, but they also release toxins. Okay, and these uh, toxins can kill or inhibit bacterial or fungal growth, but they also release these things called cytokines. And cytokines are recruiters, right? Those chemicals kind of alert and amplify the signal, so they alert the other leukocytes to come to the site of infection. And they have these really cool twisted nuclei. In the cellular response, there are also dendritic cells. Now, these, once again, very phagocytic, right? They're able to engulf that foreign material and they're present in tissue that has contact with the outside world. So the skin, uh, the lining of the nose, the lungs, the digestive tract, things like that. They do antigen presentation. So once they've engulfed the foreign material, what they can do is take little antigens and actually present them on their cell surface to kind of alert. So to kind of bring out your dead situation. Mast cells release something called histamines, and histamines cause blood vessels to dilate and increase the permeability to allow more of those phagocytic cells to come and, you know, start the response. So when we have uh, an overdone immune system to, say, pollen, we take antihistamines so that we don't have that recruitment to the site of the problem. Um, yeah, okay, cool. All right, let's talk about the complement system. Now, the complement system is all about proteins. They are proteins in the blood and they start off inactive. And there's about 30 kinds of these that circulate in the bloodstream constantly. They're inactive. They're kind of precursors, right? When they meet a foreign uh, antigen, so they are activated, okay? And this has a domino effect and it's often called the complement cascade, right? One tumbles, the rest of them do as well. In this cascade, right, one activated protein stimulates the activation of all the others and it can produce a huge range of effects. So it can enhance that immune response and bring all the other leukocytes, so that leukocyte recruitment. It can form, uh, it can actually, you know, destroy the bacteria straight away. And it can form these attack complexes uh, to destroy the bacteria by actually lysing them or bursting them open, which in turn attracts more of those phagocytes to come to the scene of the crime, essentially. And it can increase the permeability of those blood vessels to increase more of those um, inflammatory response processes. Complement protein pathways are ridiculously complex. They are the worst thing to study. So when you have a look at the picture in Pearson, it's nice and easy to follow. Uh, if you go looking for it on the internet, you are going to drown in information because there are so many of these proteins. So be very careful with your uh, further reading. Right, let's talk about the inflammatory response. It is a protective response to pathogen invasion and it means that the body systems are working, so that's good. You will see heat, pain, redness and swelling. You've seen this before, okay, particularly when you know you've induced a pathogen into your system. And it's essentially accumulation of fluid or plasma proteins and leukocytes that occur when the tissue is infected or damaged. So we, we see these four things. Um, it's also triggered when macrophages are patrolling 
the tissue, okay, and they encounter a pathogen, remembering that that body tissue should be sterile. Lots goes on in the inflammatory response, and it's all about once it, the pathogen has breached the first line of defense, uh, those injured cells actually give off certain chemicals that attract more and more of the white blood cells to come and increase that response. Uh, this is a really nice picture that shows some of those parts of the inflammatory response. Uh, I don't know whether it's there, but we want to also talk about prostaglandins. These are lipid compounds and they kind of work like a hormone effect. So it helps control these reactions that cause pain and fever and healing and all those kinds of things. And it also stimulates the blood vessel to dilate, so get bigger, to allow more of those blood cells to come through to essentially mediate the response. A reminder, there's a lot going on in this unit, okay? So two videos won't cut it. You probably should do some reading as well.